Hey what's up everyone, it's Steven here today, or SuperBruce91, and today I'm playing some Kill Confirmed on the map, standoff using the suppressed MP7, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a little tips and tricks video, and today my topic is going to be on how to win some more gunfights. So um, my idea that I got this from was I was actually playing with one of my friends, uh, Andrew I believe, a few nights back, and um, he was like, man I just can never win gunfights. And it just sparked that idea that I should do a tips video on how to win some more gunfights. So I have really maybe two or three really main key tips to keep in mind when you want to really win more gun battles. So the first one that I feel is really major is having aim assist on. Now you guys may not know like that that's in the menu options, but by default the auto aim is already on. Not really auto aim, but aim assist. And aim assist really is a big part of the game. I don't care how good of a YouTube player you are or how good you are at Call of Duty, but most likely you use aim assist and that is a big part of the reason why you're good at Call of Duty. I'll be honest, I use aim assist as well. Without it, I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty bad. And I remember there was a stretch in time when in Black Ops 2, I was doing really bad and I couldn't figure out the reason why I was doing terrible. And I was like, what is, I'm not, I'm not going to go to my options and check out my sensitivity and stuff. And that's when I found that my aim assist was turned off. So aim assist really does help you out a lot when it comes to um, hitting your target effectively with most of your bullets. So make sure that is turned on for you guys. Now sometimes aim assist can be a bad thing, but most of the time it helps you more than it does hurt you. Sometimes aim assist can drag you off your target onto a different enemy target that you don't want to shoot at. And that can cause you to die a few times, but overall accuracy really relies on aim assist. So just go check out your settings and make sure that that is set to on because it is such a huge advantage by having that thing turned on. If you don't have it on, you're probably at a pretty big disadvantage against most of the Call of Duty players that you're playing against. Now the next one is probably going to seem a little bit obvious, but you'd be surprised at how many players really don't uh, follow this rule at all. General rule of thumb, when you um, go head on into an enemy battle with somebody right gun on gun, you have to move. You can't just be standing still shooting at somebody. You have to strafe back and forth because the more that you, the more that you strafe back and forth is going to put more stress on them to have to keep on readjusting to hit you with their bullets. So make sure that whenever you're shooting at somebody, you keep on, um, you keep on moving with them. You don't want to stand in one position because you're just a sitting target right there. You want to be able to be difficult to hit. You, you don't want to be an easy target to hit. So you have to continually be on the move. Now that's kind of contradictory to some people's playstyles. I personally don't use this playstyle. A lot of people like to drop shot sometimes. I'm not exactly a big fan of drop shotters, but you know, if it works, I guess you could do it. And drop shotting, all you have to do is really just put on the tactical layout. And if you're at a closer range, drop shotting can definitely be a pretty good help because you're pretty much lowering the amount of body spam they have to hit you with their bullets. So it can work, but I've tried it. It doesn't really work out for me. You guys can try it out though. Pretty much what Tactical is, is the B button on the Xbox and I believe the Circle button on the PlayStation turn into the Knifing button. But the right analog stick on both the PlayStation and Xbox turn into the Crouch and Go Prone. So that can really be a, a big advantage to some people who are good at drop shotting. I personally can't do it, but maybe you guys can. So that's a definitely an easy way to do gunfights or win gunfights. Next one. You have to know when to um, you have to know when to use your iron sights and when not to. When you are point blank range, like close to somebody, I've seen people try using iron sights, and that's such a big disadvantage because whenever you use an iron sight, you pretty much obscure your um, peripheral vision, and your uh, like you can't really you can't move uh, your camera angle around very fast. Now, when you're not zoomed in on your uh, iron sights you are free to uh, move your gun back and forth and just fire openly called hip firing and you know when you're up close you don't want to be aiming down your iron sights because you're really slowing yourself down and it's a huge disadvantage if they're hip firing you so at maybe medium to close range hip fire is an option there is no steady aim in this game but when you are close to somebody definitely you want to hip fire you don't want to have to aim down your sights because it really is a big disadvantage now also, when you're at long range, don't hip fire, because the more you hip fire at long range, you're just going to be firing bullets all over the place. So you have to use your iron sights at long range. There are people that I've seen 
who seriously just like try hip firing me like from like halfway across the map. It doesn't work. You have to use your iron sights at right areas and how far you are away depends on if you use them or not. So be smart about when not and when to use your iron sights because many people have trouble differentiating when they should use it and when they shouldn't. So this makes sure close range, hip fire, long range, uh, iron sights, medium range, it's really just depending on how good of a player you are when it comes to hip firing or ADS. Also another thing, utilizing cover. Um, what you want to do for uh, gunfights is that if you if you can, you want to get a better uh, vantage point on your enemy. You want to get maybe a better head glitch, I guess you could call it, because uh, head on gunfights, you know, I like to try avoiding them, but you know, it's going to happen to all of us, just like it happened right there. That guy happened to have a better uh, head, head glitch on me. It wasn't really a really good head glitch, but he had more of me to shoot than he than I had to shoot him. So he had the bigger, he had the better advantage, and there was no way I could have gotten him. So make sure that you want to stay in good cover. You uh, want to, uh, whenever you kill somebody, you want to hide behind some cover. You want to reload your gun real quick. That's the general rule that I like to use a lot. After getting a kill, I usually like to to go prone or hide behind a piece of cover so I can get my full clip back up and just reload my clip because uh, in between gun battles I like to kind of rest for just a split second and reload my gun make sure I have all the amount of bullets in my clip to its max so I don't run into another enemy and I completely run out of ammo because that is ultimately will get you killed and that's a stupid way to die and you just want to avoid that so whenever you can after you get a kill just make sure that you hide behind a piece of cover and uh, you want to reload your gun. Now altogether if you just want to avoid uh, gun confrontations the best way trying to do that is really just trying to sneak around the enemy's uh, perimeters what you want to do is just pretty much go on the outside corner of the map try to stay undetected and then you can just pretty much come right back up behind the enemy and that can usually avoid you having to uh, defeat enemies gun on gun because gunfights I mean, we all want to avoid them, but it doesn't always happen that way. So when you do have to encounter an enemy head on head, you have to be able to differentiate what to do and what smart thing to do. Also in gunfights, another good tip is if the enemy has a better advantage or a better spot on you and on the map, you don't want to have to advance that enemy. All you have to do is just run away from them. You don't want to have to uh, continue fighting them because if they have the better advantage point, then you're going to die. So the best course of action is just to simply ignore the guy and act like he wasn't there. So if the guy has a better advantage and you have a chance to run away, I recommend you just ignore the guy and just completely run away from him. Because, you know, if he has a better head glitch on you, chances are you're not going to win the gunfight. So just run away. So those are pretty much all the tips I can really give you guys for uh, winning your gunfights as much as possible. Um, of course we all want to avoid them, but it doesn't always happen that way. So when you do get into a gunfight, maybe these tips will help you out a little bit. Hopefully they will, maybe they won't, but I hope that they will. But anyways, this gameplay is pretty much coming to an end. I believe my final score was something like 57 and 9. I got off to a really good start with two swarms, but I ended up really starting dying a lot later in the game. And uh, in case you guys didn't notice, there was a guy in the uh, kill feed, one of my friends, Drew beat a man, got really angry and decided to start killing himself with Claymore. So do enjoy that little funny thing. Look in the kill feed and you'll find him killing himself repeatedly. The funniest thing I've ever seen. And I was just doing really good. So hope you guys enjoyed this gameplay and commentary. If you did, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you all later. Goodbye.